Hey there, so you would like to create a settings menu where the player can easily change any graphic settings? Well, in this video we will implement just that. This is the second part of our tutorial. In the first one we implemented the selection component and in this one we are creating the actual menu. First, let's create our new settings widget C++ class. Make sure to select the uCommon activatable widget as the parent class. If you are not using common UI, you can still follow along. Just use the normal user widget class instead. I also create another file, which will be called framerate. In this file, we will later add an enum for the different framerate options. But for now, let's focus on our main widget class. For the public section of our class, we will need to override the native construct function, which will basically set up everything. Also, when you are using common UI, we can override the getDesiredFocus function, which will return a pointer to a widget, which Unreal should focus if the widget becomes active. Let's move our CPP file to the side so we can code both the header and the CPP files simultaneously. Right-click on the native construct function and generate the definition templates. For our protected section, we will start off by creating a variable for our game user settings. The game user settings class is the entry point to receive the currently set settings and also apply and save new ones. We can get a pointer to it by calling the static getter function of the class. Next up, we will focus on our first setting, which will be the screen resolution setting. Let's create another variable. This time with blueprint read only, so we can access the variable from blueprints and the bind widget meta specifier, which will help us set up the widget inside the widget designer. For the resolution, we will use a combo box with string values. When you have created your variable, let's switch to the native construct and call the initialize resolution combo box function. We will create this function right now and this will handle everything from getting the current value to reacting on changes when the player selects a new resolution. But before we can start implementing the function, we also need another variable which will hold all the resolutions available to us in the game. The variable type is an int point, which holds two data points, so in our case the width and the height of the resolution. Make sure to reset the resolution array and then call the Kismet system library's get supported full screen resolutions function. This is basically just copying all the resolutions into our array. And for the resolution combo box, we will also clear all the options if there are any. Then we iterate through each resolution and add this resolution to our resolution combo box. We do this by creating a string for the resolution. It looks a bit cryptic, but the string interpolations with printf are unfortunately not as straightforward because you need to really make sure to use the correct data type with the percent %d strings. With C++20 you can actually now use an easier string interpolation function called stdformat but this is only supported when using Unreal 5.3. Next up we will try to find the current resolution and set the selected index of our combo box to it. We get the current resolution by asking the game user settings. Then to find the right index we can use the index of by predicate function which expects a lambda function. The lambda will provide us each resolution data point inside the array as a parameter, which we then can check against our current resolution. If the current resolution is found, the corresponding index is then returned. Also make sure to check that the index is actually greater or equal to zero and then set the selected index of the combo box. Finally, we only need to listen to changes. We do this by binding an event function to the onSelectionChanged event of our combo box. This event is just another function, so let's also create it in our header file. 
As you can see, our event function expects two parameters. The selected item and the selected type. You can check the parameter list by following the source code of the Unreal Engine by clicking inside the delegate. Then you can see the list of parameters for this particular event. Okay, let's generate the event function stub and implement it. This is fairly easy as we just get the selected index and get the resolution at this index and then we can just set the screen resolution in our game user settings and apply and save. For the next setting, which is the vsync setting, we will follow the same approach. Let's add an initialize vsync function first. For the vsync setting, we will use a checkbox instead. Also make sure to use the bind widget meta specifier again. The initialization is pretty simple. We just set the checkbox to check if the game user settings vsync is enabled and then react on changes again. Again, we will need an event function to react to these changes. The parameter list is much smaller and consists of only just one bool parameter. So, generate the event function and do actually nearly the same as in the resolution changed. We set the vsync on the user settings to enabled if the checkbox is checked and apply and save the setting. Nice, we have only one more special case. Afterwards, it will get much easier. Let's create another initialize function for the frame rate setting. Again, we will need another variable. This time, we will use our new selection widget, which we developed in the last video. Let's clear all the options from the frame rate selection and the new options are based on the frame rate settings which we want to actually support. Therefore, we will loop over all available frame rate options. The frame rate options array doesn't exist yet, but we will create it in a second. First, let's go to our frame rate header file, which we create in the beginning of the video and create a new enum for our different frame rates. We will have frame rate options for the typical 30 FPS, 48, 60 and 120 FPS and also an uncapped one. Be free to change it to your liking and also add or remove options. As the enum itself cannot be converted easily to string or the underlying frame rate value, we will need to create a helper class. This helper class will have two static functions, an enum to value and an enum to string function. The first one will get the value like 48 for the 48 FPS setting and the enum to string will just print 48 FPS in a nice way. For the enum to value we will just use a simple switch case. The enum to string is a bit simpler. We can actually just use the enum to value and check if the value is greater than zero. If it's the case, we can interpolate the value again to a string. For the uncapped enum value, we will just print uncapped. Also make sure to fix the pragma1 statement at the top of the file. I unfortunately misspelled it. Okay, now let's get back to the settings widget. We can now create an array for our frame rate options. This will be just a const array of the enum values. Also, what is really great, we can just use a const expression here instead of the normal const. A const expression is a more performant variant as this array will be set up during the compilation time instead of every time when this function is called. Okay, let's add each of the frame rate options to our frame rate selection by calling add option. We can create an f text from our enum string.
Also make sure to wrap it also in curly braces to create an option struct, which the add option function expects. Then let's also try to find the index of the current selected frame rate in the same for loop. Check if the frame rate equals the value of the just added option. If it's the case, we have found our currently selected frame rate and therefore we can set the selected index of our frame rate selection to the set index. Finally, like with all the other settings, we need to react to changes. Fortunately enough, our selection widget supports C++ Lambda events, so we don't need to create a new event function to listen to these changes. Instead, we can bind the Lambda function. As a parameter, we get the selected index. Again, we set the frame rate based on the index and convert the enum to the corresponding frame rate value. Also, we apply and save the setting again. Now, let's move the const expression to an anonymous namespace. An anonymous namespace is used whenever you want to use definitions in only this particular implementation file and hide it from leaking to any other CPP file. Let's also move the namespace to the top of the file. We will use it in a second for some more advanced C++ magic. Before I forget, let's also change the get desired focus target to our resolution combo box, so it's focused whenever the widget gets activated. Okay, now let's tackle a couple more settings, which are pretty similar and will be much faster to implement than the other ones. We will create five more variables. One for the shading quality, global illumination, post-processing, visual effects and shadow quality. All of these settings have in common that you can set the quality in steps from 0 to 4. 0 being the low setting and 4 the cinematic setting. In our native construct we can define an array of elements which will hold pointers to the widget and corresponding getter and setter functions. Then we can use this array to handle the quality widgets in the exact same way without copy-pasting code multiple times. As you can see, we can specify the shading quality selection widget, a pointer to the getter of the game user settings function, which will return the shading quality, and a pointer to the setter so we can set and apply the shading quality. We can copy this object multiple times and now just change the widget and the getter and setter functions. We actually only miss the selection element struct. This struct doesn't exist yet, but we will use our anonymous namespace above to define this struct. Just go to the namespace, define the struct with the name fSelectionElement, and then you can specify the variables for the widget, the getter and the setter. The widget is just a pointer to our selection component. The getter function will be uh, type dev, a get func type dev, and the setter is set func type dev. So both get func and set func are functions which we can define by using C type devs. A type dev is like an alias. You can use type devs to create short names for more complicated types, which we will do just now. The getter function is returning an int and is a const function without parameters that lives on the game user settings. The setter function is a void function which takes an int. Please make also sure to include the pointer for the getFunk and setFunk. So to summarize again, we just created a new type definition for our getter and setter where the getter and setter are pointers to functions from the game user settings class. We can then use these pointers to handle multiple selection widgets in the same way without copy-pasting code as we just use an array and do a for loop over them. Okay, let's loop over our selection widgets array. First, let's get the current selected value by invoking the get function from the user settings. In order to make our lives easier, we can also deconstruct each element to directly reference the widget, getter and setter function. When we have the current selection, we can set the current selected index to the current selection. 
Now we only need to react to the selection changed event again. We do this by binding a lambda again. Inside this lambda we can then invoke our setter function. Then it's all about just applying and saving the settings and we are actually done. Now we only need to implement the UI. So we recompile all the changes and inside Unreal create a new blueprint class where you should use the new settings widget as a base parent class. In order to open up the settings widget, I will bind the H key on the keyboard to create and open the widget. For a real use case, you would probably need to bind it to a menu button. On press, we will construct the widget and add it to the viewport. Also, in order to be able to use it, we need to also set the game to paused and show the mouse cursor. Okay, let's implement the widget. For the widget we need a canvas and a grid panel. Inside the grid panel we will place text blocks. Let's create a couple of them and name them accordingly. Also, let's move the text blocks to the correct rows. Unfortunately, I don't know of any way how to set up the rows automatically, so we need to do it manually here. Let's also add our first selection UI. Make sure to use the correct one as one of them is just the C++ base class and the other one is the correctly designed widget version. Then let's also add our combo box for our resolution setting and the checkbox for our vSync setting. Here I try to set up the grid panel so it works also with multiple columns. Unfortunately the anchors are not correctly set up so let's just change them to wrap the whole canvas. Now we need to add a couple more of our selection widgets. Place them in the correct rows. Let's also center the settings widget. I will not add the background right now, but feel free to change the design to your liking and add a background so it works better in the game. When we want to compile, we get some errors. This is because of our bind widget meta specifier. It cannot find all the variables for our widgets and we need to name the variables exactly like they are named in the C++ class. You can check if the variables are bound correctly inside the bind widgets tab. Okay, so the global illumination is still not compiling because the name doesn't match with the C++ class. Let's fix it quickly. And then finally we need to add options for our selection. Let's add four option entries. Call them low, medium, high and ultra. Also copy these entries to all of the selection widgets so every one of them has it. Then you can compile and press play and you will see a nice working settings menu. You are able to change the global illumination, the shadows, the resolution and the frame rate. 
Also, as you can see, it saves the settings correctly. I hope this tutorial helped you set up a settings and options menu. I think it also helps a lot to understand more advanced C++ in form of pipe, devs and structs. If you found the video helpful, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.